What are the issues that Alden Smith is dealing with? Is that the reason the Cowboys let him go? Why did they decide on this safety, not Malik Hooker? And then we have this update uh, from Michael Gelkin that the Cowboys have engaged in contract negotiations with DeMonte Kazee, the former Falcons safety. Mike Fisher, Cowboys and Mavs insider, is joining us right here on DFW Sports Station Take us to the Cowboys' moves. I guess let's start off with uh, with Alden Smith, Mike. Why did they decide to let him move on? Yeah, and, and this is this is a troubling one. And if you look at Alden Smith's history, uh, his behavioral history and otherwise, you can take an educated guess uh, as to where this thing might have gone off the tracks. Uh, it is inaccurate to say that this just happened yesterday. That's wrong. Uh, th this decision was really kind of made uh, all the way back to Thanksgiving when, when some of the issues, and that's about as far as I wanted to find them, when some of the issues popped up uh, and, and caused the Cowboys to, to have some, to, to be troubled by the direction this thing was going. Um, G-Bag Nation has been reporting this for a week. We've been reporting this for a week. Uh, it made the national news yesterday, but uh, this, Alden Smith coming back here, uh, that that decision was made that that wasn't going to happen some time ago. The signing of Terrell Basham, uh, the Jets pass rusher who the Cowboys really liked in the draft a couple years ago, he he was specifically signed as the Alden Smith replacement. Uh, a source close to the situation tells me that Alden Smith still wants to play football, um, but he's more in a situation now, Sean, where he he needs to get his life back in order and the Cowboys will not be involved with Alden Smith going forward. Why did they decide on J. Ron Curse as their safety yesterday? And are they out on the other guys like Malik Hooker? And what can you tell us about DeMonte Kazee? Yeah, this is a really good one. We need to put these three guys into two different categories. Uh, J. Ron Curse has nothing to do with the other two guys. He is a special teamer and a project. He, he has no pedigree. He's not really been a starter in the NFL. He, he's a project. Six foot four, 215 pounds. Uh, he has established that he can help you on special teams. And then you know, with, with that big body, uh, even though he was just a seventh round pick, and even though uh, he's had some issues, Sean, also uh, law enforcement officials and then uh, uh, issues and then suspension issues. I think he had a uh, drug-related suspension for three games to begin last year, and then the Lions kicked him off the team before the last game, uh, and then he got picked up by the Ravens practice squad. So th there is no pedigree on uh, Jaron Kearse. He's a, he's a big-bodied project who might figure in as a backup to Keanu Neal in that hybrid role that we've been talking about. People are saying, is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? And the answer is yes. That's exactly what he is coming over from Atlanta. The other two guys are real live NFL starters and impactful players if they're healthy. Uh, Malik Hooker, if you remember back to the draft, uh, that, he was the next Ed Reed. He, he, was, he was spectacular at Ohio State. And then the beginning of his career uh, in Indy was spectacular too, despite a bunch of injuries that he brought with him to training camp and, and was nagged by those. Then last year, he gets the Achilles. So he comes to the star to try to prove that his Achilles is fine. And he had a conversation, by the way, with Atolo uh, on Twitter saying, my Achilles rehab is good and, and going to be great. So he thinks he's on the right track. That's, if he's healthy, that's a, that's a standout, Malik Hooker. He really can be that. And he's a, he can do it all, but he, he would line up at free safety. Um, Demontre KZ plays the same position, free safety, little guy, and he had seven interceptions in one year with Atlanta, fifth round draft pick back in his day, and he is a ball hawk and a playmaker as a center fielder. All three of those guys were at the star. They signed uh, Kearse to, a, to what I assume is a one-year deal and probably a veteran's minimum, separate issue from their pursuit of Hooker and KZ. What we know, Sean, is that KZ's uh, session – with the Cowboys Tuesday night and Wednesday went well enough that they are interested in offering him a contract. 
That much me know. Uh, I, I'm seeing people say, and they've offered it to Malik Hooker too. I haven't been told that. But maybe they're working on that one. Uh, you could end up signing them both if the price was right. And then this, Sean, and this is where kind of the, the cynics get caught up. Oh, they should have signed him. They should. Well, what if, what if Malik Hooker's medicals weren't good? You still want to sign him? Of course you don't. So let's trust the Cowboys medical staff here to, uh, to, to contribute to the judgment on Hooker, which is still in limbo, and on KZ, an agreement might be pending. We might hear something in the next two days. This obviously does nothing to change. I mean, they weren't going to draft one of these guys in the first round anyway from that position, but this does nothing to alter the rest of their plan. Like, if, if some other safety comes available, these guys aren't blocking that, right? Yeah, if you get to the second round or beyond, and there's still a safety there that you liked, I, the Cowboys last year established that they are – better than ever maybe at drafting the player and not the position that that the selection of cd lamb uh using that same philosophy yeah you're right if if you like grant uh the safety if you like one of the tcu guys at safety and and there they sit at two or three i, I say go ahead and take them you know this idea that well we already got a safety well they're gonna a bunch of these guys are gonna sign one-year contracts not with just the cowboys but elsewhere because of where the salary cap is so the idea that, well, we've got a safety, yeah, you've got him for 12 months, uh, and then you're going to have to turn it over again. So absolutely, Chop, I agree with you. Let, let's draft the player, not the position. Mike Fisher here on the fan. How, Dak aside, how, mu how much better are the Cowboys? How much have they improved this offseason? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Zero, and, and, of course, Dak – not, notwithstanding the fact that he was lost to injury, all that does is keep you the same as where you were. That's why it's so funny to me that we're, you know, we're giving out these check marks and these minuses and these grades, and they, they do, they did great. They, nope, they haven't, the Cowboys have barely scratched the surface of where they need to go in terms of roster building. We're, we're just a week and a half into this thing. Look at all the cornerbacks that are still on the board, for instance. Now, uh, go, go sign one of them. Flip a switch on Amari or Tank or Zeke's contract. Go get some more money. Sign one of them, and, and then let's give them another check mark. And then while we're at it, uh, let's stay in touch with K.J. Wright, the Seahawks linebacker, who still sits on that shelf with the Dan Quinn connection. And he's got some other Dallas connections, too, K.J. Wright, uh, who is 32, but he can still play. And he plays all the linebacker positions, and he knows his way around this defense. Let's, let's let the cake bake a little bit before we start handing out these big grades.